Welcome everyone, this is the Simpid, this is Michi Hoyer, welcome to this episode of uh, Sim Racing Academy, so a guided driving session together with John Sayler. Sayler, that name is actually German, but I can't freaking speak it out, it is a joke. Uh, honestly, this has taken me like so much practice already and I've binned it right in the first attempt. Anyway, today... We're going to be here with John uh, in the Porsche 911, in the GT3 Cup car around Silverstone. So one of the new um, GT3 Cup um, cars on R Factor 2. We're up here for another coaching. And uh, yeah, going to see how things panned out. Um, John has come towards me as he wanted to go quicker um, in this cars as the um, holiday comp hot lap competition on our factor 2 went not too well from him for him so he saw that he is a couple of seconds off to most of the people and uh, therefore got the coaching into me and uh, yeah I'm happily helping him on that one uh, just let me quickly reassemble some things here and uh, then we'd be fine so we're taking the Porsche around uh, Silverstone and basically every time I'll start with the same thing. I just watch the people driving first to then start working on them together. Hey John, here's Michi. So just take a few laps out. Um, go as quickly as possible, like in a standard way how you used to do it. Um, I will take some notes, then we're going to start working on something. Don't feel pressurized just because I'm watching you. Um, just try to pretend that you'll be on your own for right now. If you spin, you spin. And we just keep carrying on as long as you say, okay, right. Uh, this is sort of what I can do at the moment. Um, and I will start intervene beforehand uh, as soon as I see stuff. Sounds good. So, John is on its way um, to finish his first in-lap. Copy. And um, I'm watching his progress. Here on the server. And take a look at his driving. So coming up turn one. Can definitely work on driving lines together for turn three and four. Let's have a look how six goes. Turn seven actually looks good. Spot turn six uh, could have been a lot later at the apex. For turn seven, the line is really good as we speak about this tight, white, tight thing. So the double apex, 180 degree right hander. Turn nine, need to look a little bit further into that. Now Mac gets back at some chapel. Yeah, to my liking, a little too fast in uh, Mackets and Backets. First lap is two minutes well off track. 
Okay, turn one looks definitely better. Yeah, a little too... Um. Too straight in between those uh, turn four, turn three. Okay, setting it up over the bump there. Turn 7 look good though. Uh, well still, I mean we have quite a little things to to work around on. Too bad. 53-4. It's also quite interesting to see, um, as we obviously compare this session to another session um, that was given to Hungry Force Guy. He did the same thing here in the Audi. And Porsche drives a little differently. They should be able to reach the same pace though. 2 minutes 1.5 Okay, I can't so, um, Thank you very much indeed so far Quick question Are you sure that you're reaching 100% on the throttle? Because I can see some tiny little space missing there When watching the paddle inputs So it seems on It seems when I look at the, um, the pedal registrations that it's going all the way up But it could be that um, maybe I'm missing like the last 0.5% that should be fixed, to be honest. Um, you know how to? Um, yep. So I'm at the control setting. Just yep. looking at my throttle dead zone and percentage. So I just click them in with no pressure. Now I'm pushing to a relatively in position. I'll, just, I'll actually make it a really light. So I'll put it about 85% and hit max. I would I would even press it like close to ninety eight. Um or basically okay. just yeah, just put out the throttle max and see where the counter stops or see where the, the bar stops. And just release a tiny little notch and then click max. Because you know you want to give yourself as much room as available um onto those settings as it is very important that you can be sensible to uh, to throttle or paddle inputs in general. Okay, I've done that. Just uh, just saving it. Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to go out again because I want to see the actual difference on uh, on the paddle inputs, please. Okay. So we're also talking about out again. technical things. Yeah, and just feel free to put in a lap uh, or two again. Hmm. Okay, I can still some sort of see not a hundred percent, but this could also be down to my uh, settings. Now, now it's hundred. Now, it, now it works fine. Yeah, I'm pressing it really hard. <laughs> yeah, it jumps up and down, so maybe the dead zone is not sufficiently set for you. We can just adjust that after the next lap. For now, it should give you already a better. Undoubt undoubtedly, um, you're missing some, some performance here, but this could also be traction control, a little percent missing. May have to recheck that and do some back-to-back -back run and test. But that could uh, also be done alone, obviously. Oops. 
so let us focus again on how he deals with the other car uh not cars how he deals with the other corners here corpse corner you really want to be on that curb and uh, having this slow in fast out back it back it yeah that is a way better approach to it Driving line wise, there is not a lot of things to do really. Um, need to work definitely a little bit on the driving style, on rail braking and stuff. On turn two. Like here, he's missing to go further out and then put the car into the right place for exit. Uh, I think he's on low fuel right now as well. Um, may want to change that. Forgot to tell him though. Yeah, a little too impatient here on the throttle. Was a purple first sector though, so 32 6. That was a better exit. So, turn 10 to 14 looks pretty good already. Uh, it's just minor adjustments we need to do here, really. Also, purple middle sector. If it doesn't screw up too badly around here. Uh, this is gonna be easy PB. Surely there is a lot of time located in the setup. But yeah, that is uh, turn four is really where we n really need to work. Um, go wide into turn four, and the rest is just basically work, work, work. Can also carry a lot more speed into turn six. I need to stay a little tighter. Here in seven, but overall feel uh, looks good. First sector has been purple again uh, by a tenth. So he's still getting the groove. Oh, he lacked some time there. And dead. Interesting. Um, how much? By the way, how much fuel you got? I was running thirteen liters. Okay, so you you probably know why you spun out, right? Um, no, not really. I think I just over oversteered it. Um, not entirely true in that regard. Um, and we can we can go a little further back into into the um, 
tape, if you look at the tape replay, and this is vital though, um, if you go tape replay position 849.4. Okay. And feel free to go in your onboard, make sure you're gonna see your pedal inputs. Just watching. Mm hmm. A bit of a bad angle on the tape. I think I got too high up on the curb, maybe? No. Um, actually, what happened here, when you got off the curb, you are 60% on the brakes, or 50% on the brakes. And then you see the wheel also, from, I'm not sure whether you see your steering wheel in the car, whether you got that activated. It has like a little hole in the middle if you got it activated. It's no biggie if you don't see it, because you can see on the, uh, on the pedal inputs um, and, and the driving inputs on the left, that you are slightly, to very slightly just steering to the right. However, um, in that moment when pushing the brakes, all the weight is on the front, no weight is in the rear, putting the rear tires down on the ground, so there is no downforce, you may say, despite rear wing and stuff. Um, but the entire weight is at the front, and that makes you spin in that moment, but at the same time, it is important that you did it, because you need to make use of this kind of uh, car behavior which is very typical for the... Oh dear. Hello? Hey, Mitch, can you hear me? Oh shit, I forgot to push to talk. <laughs> I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, my bad. Let me, let me quickly uh, rephrase everything. Yeah. What you haven't got in your brain, you have in... Well, feed or mouth. Anyway. Um, okay, let's go back to... Tape 489, 489.0, that's perfectly fine. You can hear me now, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, my bad, sorry. Um, okay, so what happened here is, um, while you've been on the curb, uh, or while getting off the curb, basically, uh, at 8490 or 84.91, you can do that too, you're 50% on the brakes, and very, very slightly turn into the right-hand side. Now... With being on the brakes, all your weight is on the front, um, especially at that speed. Um, the entire weight comes from the rear, goes to the front. Now the front is loaded with weight and it will do uh, the movement, what you do on the wheel, as precisely because uh, beside that little downforce that is there aerodynamically, the downforce of the weight is now very much at the front um, and keeps the rear unloaded, so to say. And um, the Porsche is a very tail-happy car in that regard, so it is very likely to spin on the brakes um, as it favors a very much um, brake balance in the rear. So I'm not sure, what it, what is the brake balance you're on? Just a second. So currently the brake balance is set to... It's a 50-50. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, I mean, in the Porsche, 50-50 is probably about right, but here for our factor 2, I would probably still go with like 53 or 55. Because what happened here, the weight in the front was there, and the tires gripped, and the weight in the rear was gone, and the tires didn't grip, and therefore you simply spun out. However, um, it's very important that you did that mistake, because... We're going to use this kind of characteristics of the car to make it turn. Um, okay. So the key word is to balance the car with a brake. And I must warn you, this will probably take ages until you get it right. It took me like seven or eight months to get it entirely right. And still today I'm not getting it entirely right every single time. But we're going to start dealing with it. Um, and I'm probably going to show you... Um, how you would do it. Um, therefore, would like you to to send me a setup real quick, if that's possible. Okay. Um, shall uh, shall the say, sh setup been seen or not seen? Shall it been um, hidden? Seen, fine. Okay. Um, and I 
obviously need to to get one or other lap to get into grip with it but um i keep telling you stuff about the driving right now in general your driving lines are pretty good um we hate have need to do or may need to do some redefination you're lacking surely like for three or four tenths out of turn four as in compromising your entry too much um but we're gonna take care of that real quick um let me see uh, have you sent me the setup already um no just um so then I assign it to you, right? Uh, yeah, and then you go uh, standings, and at the bottom it says voting. Yep. And then you click uh, sent up garage setup. Sent. Great. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take a look on that. Um, real quick and see how it is set up in general. Very low range lock, which is probably, oh, well, yeah, it is personal uh, liking, but it's pretty good. Yep, and elsewise setup doesn't look too bad. Um, I see you changed the brake bias already to 53 and a half, right? Yep. Okay. So feel free to watch me, obviously. Okay. And then you're gonna pretty soon see what I'm talking about. Um, by m balancing the car on the brakes, we're gonna keep this kind of brake input during the corners, as you can see it right now. Yeah. Um, in order to make the car rotate. Uh, I'm trying to show that a little to you. So we're gonna go for the brakes, keep the brakes attached until we are at the apex. Here for turn 4 you need to go fairly more like this and then go deep in and then you can go pretty quickly out. I have to admit I need to get um, down to this steering range at first. Um, so also where you lack a lot of time is the upcoming turn 6 where this braking technique is really coming into play as you can brake a lot later. But if you keep the brakes attached, the car will rotate around the corner. Same goes for turn 7. You make this here, having the brake literally attached, going a little slower. But this will actually give you a better exit. Um, as you've got more room to play with the velocity. Um, same goes for Corpse Corner. Brakes. And yeah, it's, it's spun on me now as well. Um, as it is pretty dangerous to do. Um, it, it requires a lot of car balance, it requires a lot of practice with it, it requires a lot of uh, sensible controls. And yeah, here the car starts literally rotating on its own as, as soon as you hit the brakes. Um, this is probably due to your soft anti-roll bar at the front. Um, well, it's still stiffer than in the rear, but it's probably not soft enough in order for the balance. So there's too much roll in the car, making the front suspension sort of snap. And with the rear not being able to catch it. If you know what I mean? Yeah. So you see pretty much, um, there is no type of time or there's no kind of second where I'm not pushing on any pedal which is important because if you're not on the throttle you need to be on the brakes in order to make the car rotate so yeah it's on off on off yeah I really need to do one or two laps um, as your setup is a different kind of philosophy. Um, well, feel free to change that, Mitchie, because I have no idea what I'm doing with setups. I just grab stuff off YouTube and things like that. Yeah, but therefore your setup doesn't look too bad.
but I will have a look on it for sure. Um, so we'll try this again here. Brakes, yeah, and he, he, here you may want to turn in while being still on the brakes. Uh, and this is just enough of rotation, you're going to get this car moving around the corner. So make sure to be off the of the brakes right after the turn in on the wheel as it otherwise just spins around with you. So also the way I'm drifting this car right now is very much too much. If that makes sense? Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that in a race. Yeah. Yeah, it is simply too hard. Uh, let me quickly see on the setup real quick. Um, can always run a higher rear wing to be honest and then looking at your bumps here or at your setups. The slow rebound in the back is pretty soft. Can make that a little stiff. Okay, it is. Well, it's pretty hard already. So that needs a new way of thinking. The reason why you sort of slide off the corner, especially in turn two, is because the overall uh, possibility of the car to rotate is not big enough, um, which is due to a pretty stiff spring rate at the front. So I'm going to put that on four. I'm just going to resend you the setup once it's done. Okay. Um, and the slow rebound at the front. Um, I'm gonna keep that where it is, but I'm gonna soften the rear anti-roll bar to make that really soft and stiffen the front anti-roll bar by a click to make that a little harder. That should help the overall balance in that regard. Um, otherwise, looking at your bumpers or your dumpers, um, they look pretty okay, I believe. Um, if any, then in general, too so uh, too hard so I'm gonna take a click out at the rear by all of them and at the front I'm going to um, stiffen up the fast bump because you know when you go on the brakes that movement despite it's actually being controlled by the slow bump might actually even interfere with the fast bump so where to do how to define which is fast bump and which is slow bump this is an every kind of physic file of a car in r factor 2 and um, there's a value set which is ba basically a threshold and then the simulation calculates its speed of the movement so as soon as you hit the brakes the car obviously tilts forwards um, then i have a big lego ferrari lying around that could show this but um, I've just got no space to to put it on in order to make the movement oh wait, let me see it might still work you can see it on the video later then um, so this the special thing about this Ferrari is it got independent um, suspensions so as you may see um, you can move the wheel up and down with the spring. So having said so, um, in the moment where the car brakes, and I'm gonna just show it with a one wheel at the rear, this is the car under standard load, and the moment uh, you hit the brakes, the car in the back goes upwards and the weight goes forwards, which means that this wheel is having less downforce in the rear and therefore producing less grip. And this velocity here, um, when the spring moves up and down, when the entire suspension is working, that has been described either in slow or, uh, well, yeah, slow movement or fast movement. And is, I think, described, well, it really depends what is set in the, in the physics, but as soon as this threshold in terms of velocity, in terms of moving, uh, moving velocity of the spring um, is exceeded, then the other bump is doing the job. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Okay. So in that regard, um, especially at high speeds, the weight um, might kick in violently and therefore my, may also uh, be affected the fast bump setting. And they have been really soft in the front, um, making the 
weight to impact pretty quick, so I've stiffened them up. Um, and now we're gonna... Well, I'll just go out and see whether I can do better with it. And then obviously you will go out with the setup and see whether you can do better with it, which is the main main task of today. Oops. I'm sure the first few laps will be tricky. I'm not sure whether it will feel really different, to be fair. Also, speaking about driving lines, make sure to you do that really good. You don't come too wide out of here, but you really want to go wide here, slow down, and then be as early as possible on the throttle again. So, what are you often are doing? Are you too narrow into the corner, I want to say? You are too close to the in entry curb of turn 4, and therefore you need to wait so damn long to get on the power. Okay. Turn 7 you do really good, as this is this tight white tide uh, approach. So that works pretty well in the uh, in the Porsche, or in general on that track, in any type of car. So let's see how the brakes operate. Yeah, the movement is still there, but it's not as violently as beforehand. So I noticed on that, uh, that previous corner you don't go wide out onto the rumble strip you stay on the track is that something you're always doing um well probably not it depends on the car i've never tried it to use it with a porsche i can do it but in some cars the rumble strip might just um bring some imbalance into the car as it keeps the suspension moving before the actual turn so it's not really prepared for handling the load it should handle then when going into cop's corner um, however, with that kind of car, it should work, so I may be able to go over the rumble strip there, so you can feel free to keep doing so. I've just, I've just seen so many videos of uh, like fast drivers saying, use all the track. Which is basically true, yeah. Have you seen how early I was on the throttle there? Yeah. It was just a notch too early, but basically just what you need to do. Yeah, I think you could do that because you're going wider out on the entry, yep. which gives you a, yeah, more space really, because I was, if I, I, I know what I was doing wrong, if I gunned it there, the back end would come out, because I was too tight. True. Exactly what I mean in that regard. So now you can also see how I balance the car around Mac, it's back, it's in chapel. Oops. Not with a counter steer, but really you want to maximize the line of that one here. As being as early as possible on the throttle. And I was a one and a half tenth down, but now I'm seven and a half tenth up on you. And you do not really lose a lot of time between six, seven and nine. It's basically just in that fast cornery section where you lose it. Also, you can maximize your exit quite hard when going late towards the apex of Stow. Your turn 16, 17, where I'm at right now, looks pretty good though. There's not much to change really. I will give some general hint in the, uh, in the report later, of course, but that is basically that how you do it. Yeah, dead. So. I will further adjust some things in order to assist. I think there is some on throttle understeer in the car, if you agree. Yeah, I haven't noticed much understeer, but um, I've noticed that it slides a lot out. Mm -hmm. Like in the high in the high speed turns, I can feel it sliding out. I couldn't tell if that was front understeer or if that was a whole car actually moving off to the left. 
So what I what I will do is I keep I, I go stiffening the slow rebound. That should further help you to not get into this weird kind of spin um, when being on the brakes. And I will also stiffen the slow bump, which should um, give you the possibility of um, uh, the slow bump. That should give you the possibility of um, having less mid-corner on throttle understeer, I want to say. Um, so that was it about that. Also, your turn six, that was one thing I just um, wanted to add real quick. And that means I will go out again just very shortly. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I will pull in a full lap. I'm trying to do everything in the out lap, but with cold tires, it's kind of difficult to get it. Um, because basically turn one, if you get that right, turn two is absolutely uh, flat out with no problem whatsoever. Um, so we've already spoken about the fact about turn three and four. As I said, three is good. Feel free to invest the extra meter on the left hand side to really be slow here. And then you can literally pick up the throttle right on the apex real hard. Um, yeah, that should feel better again on the overall car balance. Also, you're quite early on the apex or on the curb here. Try to stay a little further away to then really come close to the apex here. I missed it this time though. Um, don't go as wide out of the turn in turn 7 as you usually do, because exactly this happens then. Um, you may want to be a little further to the inside and let the car rotate a little earlier towards towards the back straight already um, so that should give you a better exit and the um, actually being early on the throttle again this is why this track is pretty technical to be honest it's not because um, or it, it looks quite easy to be honest, the, the Silverstone circuit, but to me it's one of the most technical tracks in the world. Um, as there's so many corners that have a very distinctive style. Also here was too late on the, on the curb, so that's why I run wide here. You need to compromise this turn 16 a lot in order to get a blast of an exit out of 17, which is this one. Just stuff like that. And speaking about the understeer, maybe I'm just not per turning enough on the wheel. I'm just about to find that out. Yeah, that seems the case. Yeah, I'm not turning enough on the wheel. Okay, haven't said anything. You're absolutely right. The car balance is fine indeed. So despite this little slide, I'm still gaining time out of that corner. So three, three and a quarter of a tenth to be found here. Uh, lost it. Have you seen that little touch in the brakes I can't, we're gonna show um, look at that in the replay real quick once I'm done with the lap um, we're gonna go through it I'm um, watching at the video normal and then also in slow motion so you can see exactly what I'm talking about Yeah, it might have a little too much rotation now, but we're gonna see. Um, it is a little bit more aggressive when being on the throttle, but it should turn a lot more, so it should boost your lap time here. Um, so going back on the tape into this turn seven, um, tape position 2307, or make it eight, doesn't matter. Make it 8.6 and we are at the same time. Yeah, I'm there. 
Okay, so now if you go through it, um, wait before you go on with the tape, around, yeah, 2311.6, this is where I shortly press the brake, and then you just watch what the car is doing, just by going through it by, uh, um, by quick motion, or standard motion, just go through it and see it. Yeah. Got what I mean? Yeah, I'm watching. Otherwise, we're going through it sl through slow mo, and um, I'm gonna tell you where to start. So, how do you do the slow mo on the? Uh, uh you press the arrow down. On. Arrow down. Just check it out real quick. See whether it works. Yeah, it does. Okay. So. 2308. Yeah, 2308.6. Go with that. Tell me when you have it. There. Okay, and then when I say go, you simply switch uh, from, yeah, to, to press the uh, button, the arrow down button, in order to get, uh, keep the slow mo going. Yeah. Um, so three, two, one, go. go. What you see now is uh, I'm a little on the brakes, I'm starting to turn in into this turn seven. Now I'm a little off the brakes uh, because I'm not in the right speed, given a little bit of gas again in order to speed up to come that little wide. And then I realize, oh damn, there's not enough rotation, which I realize right now. So I put on the brakes and now you see how the car just does that little bit more of rotation that brings me pointing back towards the inside curb. And this is yeah, because of the very same reason. And I'm going to bring up the um, uh, the Ferrari back in here. And we can basically stop watching this at that point. Um, but what basically happens is a very simple thing. Um, If we are in that turn, I need to turn this car around, uh, steering to the right, I'm going to make this extreme. So what's basically happening, the car is like, you need to see on the camera there. And probably also put on the camera in big, there we go. Um, basically this wheel, the front left wheel is loaded very much so. So you can see the car dumps into the left hand side and um, and rolls to the left. And with the downforce, being the amount of downforce it is, it can handle a certain amount of turn as the tire has been pushed down on the road. Now, by pressing the brakes, you're going to bring up the load of this wheel here. So basically the car deeps, digs even deeper on the front. It also goes a little bit upwards, pushing the front, or pushing the weight to the front, like this. I'm over-exaggerating here in the video, but it, basically this is what happens, which increases the load on this tire here, making it, making and increasing the friction on the ground, and uh, that will make the car rotate more. Uh, at the same time, obviously, you have this, um, the same thing here in the back, so while the car, oops, while the car goes up um, here, I mean usually it is loaded like this and then the moment the car goes up the suspension gets unloaded a little here the, uh, the rear end gets a little loosey and also um, helps on the rotation of the car so this is what you do with trail braking um, as well as you maximizing the turn in while still being on the brakes and this is exactly the thing that you really should do in this turn as in if you're going too quick give it a little um of brakes in order to make it rotate look at the inside of the corner again real quick um and then be yeah perfectly fine out of the turns but um yeah right now i'm going to give you uh, back the setup and stop talking for a moment as of uh... now it's informative and it's good so if we're speaking about lap times real quick, um, the 1.1 seconds is obviously a little off now. Um, I'm taking away a good 
an exact tenth of you in the first sector. I'm taking away an nearly an entire second in the middle sector just because of the fast of the fast line. And I'm pretty sure you saw that your turn 10, 11, this is the entry of Maggots, Packets and Chapel, is really good. However, you are tending to go a little too quick into this turn 12 um, as you not stick with the ground, uh, sorry, not stick with the, with the curb on the inside. And this is what you have to do in this GT3. You have to stick on the left hand side of the curb in order to maximize the angle, to maximize, sorry, to minimize the angle, minimize the turning radius of the turn 13, which is sending you back on um, on hangar straight in order to maximize the exit speed right there. Because this is where I make like surely two, maybe even three tenths of the, sorry, this is where I make two tenths of the three and a half tenths missing um, in the third sector. And then you will get there. But just go out now and uh, you have to attach a new setup? Yep. Great, then have a go. Oh dear, me and my tongue. Happily, um, we found that out. Anyway, um, let's see what he can do now. I hope this kind of Ferrari thing... I wanted to actually make a video at some point where I need to put up a proper camera and microphone and stuff to um, really put it on there. Um, and do footage with it, so we're now looking at the driving lines. Lol. Yeah, this is nearly like you've did it 200 times beforehand already. So good job. Keep doing that. Maybe go a little, tiny little bit longer straight. Go a little slower, then you can even get a better exit. But I'm not going even to be picky about it. it was a very good turn four. Sochon really puts it into straight improvement. And also feel free to um, test this brake balance thing uh, from time to time if you wish to get more experience of it. It feels weird beforehand to keep braking and then say you go actually faster with it, but once it goes over and flash and blot, you're going to be fine. Um, last question, what was your personal best around here? Uh, 2458. Well, so basically you're not that far away. See what you did right now there, I know it was because we were talking, but you were just going a little too quick into 12 and that got fucked up in 13. He will do fine though. I'm pretty convinced that he can improve a lot, like a fair lot. May want to st try sticking in second gear there for turn forward. Actually, should be better. Okay. Too close that time. Yeah, also a uh, nuance too early on the throttle, but keep working on it. It's not, uh, you know, it's not going to happen from now to then. I'm getting time back. That was a good save, but this is exactly what I mean. You come too out, too quick out of 11, then you are compromised into 12, and even further compromised into 13. Oh. 
was a good middle sector though, um, despite the fucked up turn 7. So I'm pretty interested, uh, we got more than an hour to go as um, John gladly took two hours at the same time. Um, Felt a bit soft there. Say again? Feels a little soft. Wanna ask after turn four? Too soft on the front or in the rear? Uh, the rear maybe? Yeah, well, rear is actually softer than the front. Um, we can work on that though. So he has just matched his first sector by six thousands of a second. It was a good turn seven. Now if he keeps the rest together, I'm pretty sure he can do a better middle sector. Not too bad. I mean, remember, we are only um, ex nearly exactly three tenths of his PB. It's 290 thousands of a second where we're away from it. Yep, you could have throttled that like two or three tenths earlier still. Um, PB though in the middle sector by two and a half tenths. And this is exactly what I mean. Um, now he's nearly there. Sector-wise, he should be there already. Um, not going to be picky about it, of course, but um, I'm pretty sure we can get him to the 59s in the night. Ah, so, oh, he off-tracks it. No. Dude, that was that was quicker than a 204. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I think it would have been what if I if I didn't look at the track code, it'd have been like a two two dot six something. I mean, I know me two dot one something. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 something like that. Like pretty quick, like damn quick in the in the middle sector. Okay, um, so you feel the rear end being too soft? Yeah, there was one area where it um. Like when I told you when it felt soft, I don't remember what turn it was, but it. Yeah, you just finished it just, the lap. Yeah, when I when I did the when I gave it the gas, it just I don't know. It felt like it just uh, was slow to respond. Mm hmm. So you wouldn't say that the um the rear lost its turning ability for the traction though. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, maybe it's the traction control kicking in. That's what I'm feeling, maybe. Yeah, traction control map is on one which is lowest. You can turn it off though. Um, yeah, then it's entirely on yours. Um, could work. Really, it could work. Um, depends whether you want to try it. Um, if you otherwise feel that the car is some sort of being too lazy there, you may want to... Well, you can even go a click harder on the slow bump in the rear this will make the weight to come later back towards the rear end and um and decrease the on throttle understeer out of the turns however if the car is about to spin um yeah it, it is it gets harder to to catch the spin but whatever you want to like just go for it no, the handling was really it, it the handling felt much better mm -hmm. um i didn't feel that that sliding effect of the whole car in in the fast turn and the fast rights um, yeah this so is that, due to the anti-roll bar true yeah that went away so that was that gave me a bit more courage to to get on the gas earlier um let me let me try it without traction control and see what it, see what it does okay just so i set it to zero <laughs> yep <clears throat>
In the moment where you now went wide over this turn 7, uh, that is where you could have slightly touched the brake and then you would have rotated earlier. Okay. That section felt good. Yeah. Line-wise, pretty good. Could be a little quicker in terms of velocity during the corners, but it's absolutely fine. You get in there. Feels better there? Yeah. So, um... Sloppy but fast. Yeah, it could be could be down to the uh, traction control, of course. Speaking of fast, uh, he's off a little, and he's very much so. Yeah. Also, that is where you can touch the brakes a tiny little bit in order to get the turn done quicker. But, uh, yeah, this requires a lot of practice. Yeah, you, you rescued yourself very good out, out of the narrow entry into 12. Wow. He has just smashed his personal best in the middle sector by 3 tenths. Just completely out of the blue. Um, so the, the lap he, he went wide and killed was a 53-0-6 in the middle sector. Now he just did a... 52.66, so that is 4 tenths coming across the line in a 1 159.8. Hey. Awesome driving, awesome driving, awesome job. So you still luck two and a half and even three tenths in the first sector. You went purple in the third sector, um, and by purple, I mean you've beaten my lap time in there, and your middle sector time wise. I'm really surprised that was biblical. I expected it to be a little slower, to be fair, because it turned seven. Felt like being a bit too wide, being a bit too far off, but it seemed like you had a blast of an exit. And also maybe traction control um, helped in that. I'm not sure if traction control adds a weight penalty. So if you got that off, maybe um, there is no weight penalty. I'm, I would need to confirm that. I can't tell by heart right now. But uh, definitely, that is a nice improvement. Jesus, it was it. Well, it felt on the edge the whole time. That was uh, that was crazy on the edge. Yeah, probably for a hot lap event, it would work quite well. Um, and this is probably why you want to have um, traction control being on all the time, as it just adds the the little bit more of stability. Like I saw you being over the edge through 11, 12, 13. And this is why I say there's still plenty of time to gain for it. Um, how you feel on the overall car balance, having said that, though? Um, would you would like to change anything? Is there anything that would make you think it could be improved while still having traction control being turned off? I'm just thinking of the lap. Feel free to just go out again and to 
do two or three more laps even um, just to get more feel for it because I'm I'm pretty sure I mean the 310 from the first sector definitely easy to find um, I'm sure you're still like a tenth or two in the middle sector I mean okay. you're just a tenth behind me now Is that hold on yeah it's just the tenth basically so you're not missing much what would uh what would like one more uh, wing do like take the wing to 10 that would just give you more downforce and slower straight line speed wouldn't it yeah but not that much um saying so you could try it um it would give you definitely more stability in the fast corners so it might be worth a go yeah, let me try it. Let me try, um, so no traction control and everything, but I put the wing to 10. Yep, go for that. Because like I said, I, I really felt like I was about to lose it nearly every, uh, every turn. And that could have just been me running out of talent, you know? I mean, this is also now where you can, um... Well, we could work on the on the dumpers again in order to make the rear end softer a little bit and being able to work around more weight um, could increase the traction and stuff but there's you know best is now to just get into rhythm with everything um, I keep remembering myself when doing FSR and you do the first quality run with engine mode 7 instead of 1 and, and Q boost and having like massive power on the on the drivetrain. Um, it takes time to get used to that. You just not go out and, and be on par with it. Now, if you go to white, try using the brake to make the car rotate. Yeah, I just did that. I tapped it and it uh, it brought the nose around. Yeah, exactly. So this is remember this every single time when you feel like uh you know I'm not just getting the line right. I would need more rotation. Before going on the set, try to do it with a brake. Because that is more accurate driving. And uh, then you can maybe even run other setup possibilities that uh, work wet better in other sections of a track, you know. And stay all to the left here. That is good. And don't go too hard over the inside curb there. But you, you're getting it right. It's just about a matter of... Uh, getting things together. I'm also going to check on the top speed. The maximum value has been 256.2 in the other attempt. And you just did... Did. <laughs> yeah, when I tried to do different theirs, I tried to stay in fourth. Because I noticed you were doing that in fourth. And then I shifted down to third and then it, it just came out from behind. Yeah, uh, it's due to the uh, differential. So if any, you lost in KPH on on the the hangar straight. But let me compare that with other in laps. And that's likely due to the increased wing, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. Also, your exit out of thirteen wasn't on 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 top of it. But oh, no, that was crap. <laughs> yeah, if you do a better exit, if you focus on your exit, I'm more able to tell. Yeah, exactly. Those are the sorts of events where a short tab on the brake helps. I'm trying to carry a bit more speed through there.
Yeah, again, you're too late on the throttle. It is okay that you shoot a little wide as the left hand king is easy flat out anyway. So you're allowed to overrun that a little. Okay, I took that in fourth this time. So I'm pretty convinced that his overall driving already has improved. He's feeling more comfortable, also the set contributes. Um, I want to add that it is all notice of you guys. Um, any improvement that's done here is all by his driving or the setup as the real road has been put static. So whatever improvement is there, it's truly just coming by him. Whereas turn 1 and 2 was a big improvement, turn uh, 3 and 4 sadly haven't been so. Here's personal best at 32.5. Whoa! Still at 32.5. With that no offense, unoptimal turn 3 and 4. Yeah, too early on throttle there, should have used brakes just for a notch to make this no spin and then throttle uh, input would have been absolutely fine. Yeah, all he needs to work on is timing. And I'm gonna note that to put it in the report. Kinda interested in his feedback. On the consultancy report. Thirty-three zero in the middle sector, top speed, even quicker than in his PB, so the rear wing doesn't really hurt at all. Keep going for another lap. Two oh oh two. I'm wondering whether. It nah. Probably high tire temperatures, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is why attraction control would make sense, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take it to one. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just not sure how it really um, affects the driving in such in terms of having a weight penalty or not. Um, what I can tell you though is that the rear wing does not infect the top speed too much. You have been 0.3 kph quicker than your actual PB. And yeah, well, with that being said, uh, of course you butchered the, uh, the turn 13 twice now, but still. That looked like a great cops corner. Good exit out of 13. Uh, he off tracked the lap beforehand. I was just wondering why I couldn't see no. Uh, 
check the times here. See you had a little to hesitate with a turn in here. Uh, if you go a little longer straight and turn in a little later, there won't be any hesitation, you will be just perfect on it. 32.7, that is... 9 thousandths of a second quicker than... Um, That is PB, which uh, leads me to the opinion that there is no big weight penalty. I might be wrong though. Turn 7 looked okay. Little too quick in 12 again, loses it. Oh dear. Yeah, 53 1. It's no bad middle sector considering the slide. Seven zero. Yeah, that was a lot better. That should give him personal best. Yeah, I felt like he had the speed that time. Sector one. Yep. Well, not personal best, but 32.6 is definitely a tenth quicker than his actual PB. Uh, he was a little too early there at the throttle. Uh, it's okay. It's no biggie. It's more important to not fuck up the fast turns. Cops looked all right. Now just get them done. Come on, boy. Oh, really quick through there. Ah, uh, 52.8. Uh, yeah, he lost a little time, obviously though. Uh, but still should be on a course for a 59. Yeah, it's working very hard here on the wheel fighting the car. Missed the apex and therefore fucks up turn 17. Yeah, this is such an unforgiving turn if you fuck that up. Which will put him back into a 2 minutes range. Yeah, he doesn't even finish the lap entirely. Yeah, traction control. No, no traction control felt felt better. Yeah, I hear it because there's no hesitation on the throttle. Just turn it off then. Let me let me quickly retry with without traction control, please. Okay. Because that is an important thing, as we may even find something further in the balance, and we're going to tell him that. 
Um, could obviously be that without traction control, you need to somehow set up the uh, balance of the car a little different. Let me see. That would make sense. I mean, I, I had a hell of a lap going there, but I bend it on the uh, the second turn. But I was already, I think, two two seven five up, and then I lost it. Uh, where do you mean exactly? On on the one the the run I did with no traction control and the wing at ten. Yeah. I I had a really fast uh, turn one and oh yeah yeah turn yeah. Two. yeah and then you've been the turn three yeah yeah I saw that too. Also gives you obviously the chance to have a look again at driving lines and how I would say things should be done. Oh dear. Also try to really hit this curb on the right hand side that stays on to the middle of the track and you just want to have a fluid run through all those turns uh, and I've just fucked it up. That's going too deep into the inside turn, have to open the steering to keep on the track and then obviously throwing away the turning momentum there. But the approach until the lap 13, uh, turn 13 was just as it should be. To be entirely honest with you, I do not really feel that much difference with traction control off. Okay. But, uh, I mean, if you feel it better, uh, even if it's just a placebo, go with it. As we're hunting for the lap times, you know. See how I threw the car around with a with a brake and then being able to push the throttle? Yeah. You will also see in the video what it did on the lap timer. Oh fuck. No. Eh, damage. But yeah, basically I was six tenth uh, up at that point. Um so I mean, I cannot really say it's bad, I cannot really say it's quick, I cannot see really say it's good. Uh, and at the same time, I cannot see it's, uh, say it's slow. Um, if you feel better with no traction control, keep going on it. And then I would say the ultimate challenge is to beat that 159.6, isn't it? Yeah. Well then, I think we should dedicate our time to that. Um, okay. As long as you feel comfortable with the set... Just keep working on the driving. You've now seen a perfect example in the turn 7 for rotating the car with a brake just as much as you need it. It may um, be a little slower on the actual apex, say in... And this is where you sometimes have to divide between race situation and going for lap time. Uh, the way I did it right now, I'm surely a good 5 to 10th kph slower at the apex. Um, 
which in standard circumstances when there is no traffic around you is absolutely fine. However, that might just open the door for one of your competitors to put his nose in. Um, yeah. So you have to maybe decide when you need to defend off to doing things different at that point. However, if you um, are in clean air and hunting for lap time, I may lose a half a tenth in the actual turn 7 if you go from turn into exit point or exit curb. But I'm gaining over a tenth just by exit speed over the upcoming straight. So if you look at it as a gross value, so the gross net time gain is half a tenth, whereas the net net time gain is negative half a tenth. So it's an actual loss through the corner. However, right where you are, you're still gaining time for having a better exit. And that is the time no one can take away from you and no one is able to catch on the straight because obviously the, the speed you go over the straight is being defined by the exit speed of the last turn. So that's the theory behind it. And with that being said, I'm going to be silent to him again and just let him do. So he's now on to beat the 159.647 that's uh, set by me and he has a 159.809 which is 161,000 to go and I'm pretty sure he can do it, he can improve it. Uh, if he improves his driving furthermore and keeps f focusing on it, 58 iron prospect, it just needs pitch perfect driving. Very good, 16 and 17. Keep doing that. Just got that final complex of turns absolutely spot on. Great one and two. Uh, he compromises his entry angle into three a little bit too much. You're compromising yourself into turn 3 a little too much by staying too far on the right hand side. Try to take it turn 2 a little tighter while still being flat out but to enable a better entry for 3. <laughs> Having said this all, 32.641 in sector 1 which is really good. Turn 7 he not had to correct a lot by the brakes, it's all been good. Now I just can't wait for a good middle sector. How much were you down? Uh, or up? Uh, he was hovering around uh, almost zero equal. Yeah, okay. I just keep trying, just keep pushing. Try to get a better entry for 3, but don't slow down during l turn 2. Can go for it. Do it. Come on. Yeah, very much so. Ah! Old habit. Turn 3 was good, now you fucked up turn 4 by yourself a little. It's no biggie though, should still be a good third, uh, first sector time. Oh, a 32498, indeed. So that is a... Uh, purple, isn't it? No, it's not, I did a 
better sector one, but uh, it is personal best indeed. Turn seven looked to be all right. No. I know exactly why he lost it though. Oh, damage. Hmm. Guess what happened? The five, the five percent of brake input were enough to spin the car around there. Just keep, just keep going. You had a personal best sector one ever. Thirty-two four nine eight, which is a uh, out of the box two tenth quickest sector one. Yeah, this is where you once again should slightly use the brakes. I tapped it a bit. I guess maybe wrong place or not enough. Yeah, what I did very often is I was dancing on the brakes, so keep keep dancing on it, like pressing it, leaving it, pressing it. Um, and it's just a way of getting towards it, get into the feel of what it does. Understeer, there. Yeah. This is also where you want to tap the brakes pretty, very, very rarely. But this might just, instead of understeer, this is what I say. Before we go start on working on a setup to prevent the understeer in that area, you better just slightly tap the brakes, get the car a little bit into rotation, and then just go flat out. But now good luck for the laps. I really want to see him improve. I know he can do it. Had to compromise himself there. Too late, uh, too early on the apex of four. Thirty-two point six. So at least a good tenth. But this is how much potential there is still lying around. That could be a brilliant turn seven. Pretty sure he's up. Oh, lost a ton of time there. Yeah, that was a little slide. You can gain it there all back in that area though. Yeah, that was a good exit. That was a good exit. 32-7. So he just lost the tenth. He's pretty much identical right now on his PB. To me, he's too early here on the curb. Come on, go for the next lap too. Good job. <laughs> he improves by 7,000. 
Oh dear, this is going to be a long night if he keeps going like that, but no joking. It's a really good job here. Thirty-two six four zero. Thirty thousands off his PB now. This was a brilliant turn seven there. Keep going. That should also give him the time back. He lost on the other lap, so just keep getting that turn right here mm. he's a little off yeah that was oh, expected fuck. yeah you already made that happen in the exit of 11 though as going in a little too quick a little too wide you sort of missed to make the rotation and keep it in the middle of the road um, the thing is, if I go again and set a lap time, it's probably going to be a lot quicker if I go again. But I would probably also, if you wish to, um, go again and re-show you the lines around the quick circuit. This is where you get it wrong occasionally still. Um, okay. It's just how you, however you want to have it. Yeah, go for it. And maybe, can you do them slow? Can you go through them yes. with a bit less speed? Yes. So, going to disable push to talk. So, again. you're using no traction control as well? Yes, I don't. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I'm also going through this section real slow. It's basically you want to go long here, have a steep turn and then be on the throttle right over here already. I uh, over exaggerated a little bit, but it's just basically you want to make the turn a lot before the actual apex and you're going to see in the, um, in the report what I mean. Also, when being on the brakes and turn, make sure to not have a lot of turning input on the wheel. Okay. As this makes the rotation controllable. This is what killed you here, especially. As you turn pretty hard on the wheel. If you just turn it like that, it's gonna be fine, okay? So I'm going through there a little slower now. So you want to come, of course, kiss that curb here, kiss this curb here, stay in the middle. So then take a little wider line, go over there and have a brilliant exit over here. Well, have an exit, I mean. Um, just couldn't get enough rotation in it, but I think you kind of got what I mean. You're always some sort of compromising the next turn until to the very last turn, which you want to have the perfect entry for. And this is basically, <clears throat> you set up your entry for turn 13 already in the exit of turn 10, more or less. Speaking about that. So I do a quick lap. Yep. Yeah. Oops. Gonna re-show you what I mean, especially for turn 3. Fucked up turn one, but nevertheless, I want to be right here 
well, not there, but... Oh dear. Could have nearly drift slide in the round. So yeah, I can take the slap quick as it is. It won't be an improvement. Um, but I want to make myself a line up with the entry curb on the outside in order to really give me the maximum turn in for turn 3. As I want to maximize the speed going through it, obviously. Also, you can look a lot of that video in the end uh, about balancing the brakes. Uh, sadly, you cannot see my pedal inputs, but um, it will be pretty obvious to you when I'm on the brakes and when not. Okay, I should. Yeah, I saw you just tap it right then. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, as I said, turn 10 is going to define your turn 13. You stay here, the right. Well, if you don't fuck it up, I fucked it up. <laughs> fucked it up badly. Um, I'm not sure if... The, the problem in those cars is the degradation itself is not that bad. Uh, it's a thermal degradation that kills you. So once the tires heat up, once they get a certain amount of heat, um, they just get slippery and lose grip, despite there's still plenty of rubber on the tire left, as in percentages. Uh, but the very same thing just happens to me right now. Tire temperatures are not overly high, but the rear end just feels sloppy. Yeah, uh, I found if you ever bin it and then you try to race, even if it comes down to normal temperatures, it's it's not the same. Yeah, exactly. This is where the thermal degradation has been simulated. Robber that has that been cooked two, once doesn't 14. work anymore. Point nine, three. That's a good way to put it, yeah. So this is better. Yeah, but the rear is just too sloppy. It's so I notice you, you always put the tire pressures down to the lowest. Is that just an R factor two thing? Yeah. Okay. It's the very same thing like uh, with I racing to not turn on the wheel too hard. Yeah, it's all about smooth inputs, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So in full tenth up on my own. Oh, come on. Well, with a 300 degree on the on the rear hand tires, it's going to be hard to do the turns correctly. But I'm just going to try for it once again. So you want to kiss that inside curb here. Better want to then come to the left hand curb, and in the end, want to oversteer into the wall. <laughs> yeah. It just, just wasn't possible. Anyway, you can go for it again. Um, I All think right. I think it became some sort of clear where I wanted to put you, I guess. At least I hope so. Well, I've never gone below two before, so... Well, that's an achievement already, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's... I mean, just if I combine your best sector times. Let me combine your best sector times. Uh... Well, you did a purple sector in in your last attempt. Um, so PB virtually 32 498 sector one. Then you had a mind blowing sector two at once. 665. That was pretty strong. Never reached that again. And then, as I said, final sector is purple. This gives you, and of course, I'm not going to be picky about it. Um, yeah, uh, two minutes fifty nine, five seven four. 
which is, well, basically the time you want to get in order to beat that benchmark. I mean, it's good to see right now that the 59.6 is, is a challenge for you. Um, but I'm pretty sure that you can do better. And I'm looking forward to seeing that in the next 34 minutes still. Just don't pressurize yourself, that's very important. Don't pressurize yourself. Just focus on your driving and rule number one. Never try to force the car into a position where it would not go. Um, having said so, I overdid. I did exactly that that made me spin around turn three on the first lap approach where I really overturned the wheel and everything just to make the car go to the inside uh, to the outside for turn three again. And I just overdid it as in to overdrive and over forcing the car which it was not able was not able to be handling. But now focus on a lap. As I was still in replay there, sadly. Was a good turn four. If I would have to guess, 32 five, 32 six. 32 five. It's going a little too slow, too early on the apex there, or too early on the curbs. Yeah, you have been slightly too early in the turn 6 curb. Uh, I think you noticed it. Yeah. Oh, that could be brilliant. Throttle it. Uh, a notch too late on the throttle. Notch too late on the throttle there. Out of the turn 13, but never mind. Keep going. Um, he is a little behind. He misses 210. He misses the turn 6. No joke. Just misses the turn 6. Seven miss seven thousands and it puts a purple third sector by a tenth. He's done the exact identical time as he did beforehand. So we have a 159.809, we have a 159.802, and now we have 159.809 again. And then he puts it 32.7. So he misses a tenth now in sector one. Was a little bit better here in turn six. Yeah, what he's doing right now is just perfect. He just starts very much putting into practice what I told him to do. And uh, as I said beforehand in, in the other episodes of Sim Racing Academy, um, doing the actual improvement during the session is very rare. Now, while we speak, he just did a 200458 beforehand. Now, by redefining the setup a little bit, redefining the driving lines a little bit, he already improved towards um, a 159.8, so 610 already. As he now puts it in 52.7 in the middle sector, which is just four thousandths of his PB or his yeah his PB time middle sector there, and he was just half a tenth of sector one. So if he nearly just gets in as good 
Sector 3 in as he did last lap around. I think with the slide he killed it. It could be marginally going to a 59.7. 804. Can't believe it. Well, some would say you're really consistent. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, was pretty spot on. I mean, it's interesting. You did a 59.809. Then you improved to a 59.802. You do 59.809, 59.804. Um, that is accurate as F. So, um, honestly, you just need to keep working. You just need to keep hitting and nailing any other apex and at some point you're going to get it together and smash the point six by a mile yeah because i remember on the uh the hot lap challenge from studio 397 you were like a 157 weren't you yeah i did 157 7. i wasn't a mclaren though uh, but yeah i mean Cars are identical to a certain extent, it's just another values on the setup and therefore a little bit different to balance them up, but overall the BOP is good. I almost feel like uh, on that exit that you aim for the DRS sign and gun it. Uh, how do you mean? I'll show you next lap. Okay. This line is pretty good. If you can take that a little quicker, it will definitely boost your exit speed there. Also, don't cut too much of the um, turn 11 apex. This is the right hander. You just want to kiss the curb because if you go too far on the inside, your wheel some sort of hugs up on the inside and then jumps over the curb, unsettling the car when going off the curb. Right, let's see this. He's on verge, really, for breaking into the point sevens or even point sixes. He just needs to get the things together. Seemed a little slow through one. Can even stay tighter through two. Okay, got what you mean. You could have even stayed tighter to turn two on the exit, but this is all good. Looks like a good sector one. Yeah, 32580. 1.3 tenth quicker than his PB. Brakes. Oh, I could have saved that. Only about just. Uh, I think he's still on improvement way. Oh, if it doesn't off track, that is a good turn nine. Good turn nine there. So now C10, 11, a little too far, maybe also a little too slow. Yeah, sort of fucking up the rhythm and throttle it. It's not the optimal light, uh, not the optimal speed there. 52.59 though. Um, personal best in the middle of the sector by half a tenth. Now, if he just puts an average sector three in, which he's able to do, save, he's gonna beat my lap time.
Don't off track it. Oh dear. 59620. And that is job done. That is job done. He's beaten it. <laughs> Should I stun myself? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if you just get an average third sector in, and it was really just average because you, you lost over a tenth to your purple, a tenth and a half really. And it's just, if he just puts in an average third sector and doesn't savage it, um, he's going to beat the lap time. And I think, who? Okay, it's just 26,000. But good job. Good job indeed. Um, I thought that going through turn 11, 12, 13, that looked a little slow between 11 and 12. It was a good exit on 13, though. You, I was a lean towards saying you were too late on the throttle again out of 13, but then I saw you fighting the wheel still. Um, so maybe be a little bit more smooth with your pedal inputs. That should boost your lap times as well. Um, as in you, you really saw on the wheel. Um, is that the right word? Saw or you see it, see wing? So no. I'll yeah, you could see me uh, jerking the wheel trying yeah, to exactly, control it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, if you get more smooth towards that and more like okay. If I need to count the steer, I need to just put it this, and then slightly go backwards, bring the car back into balance. Um, that helps a lot because this car, this Porsche is very turning in the very first few percent of wheel, uh, steering wheel input, and then it gets sloppy and sluggy and uh, sort of swampy. It gets a little dumb, I want to say. Yeah, it gets, um, it gets slow and boggy, like uh, like yes. you're in mud. Yes, exactly. But the initial, uh, the initial reaction on the turning wheel, like the initial turning, that is really, that is a really strong effect, and that's why you want to make that as smooth as possible, just to keep it controlled, you know. Yeah, I noticed. Um, so the the, the fast right hander after um, what's it called? Uh, with the pegs, crickets, or something like that. Um. You know, after the so that that tight uh, that tight right hander, and then you power out, then you pass the the pegs on the right hand side. I can't my I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, which turn number you mean? Turn seventeen. Uh, uh, let's see, turns. Uh... I mean, which uh, which one you in the beginning of the lab or in the end That'd of be the easier. lab? I'll just show you. Okay. I never remember all the, uh, the names. I should have brought up a, a track map beforehand. Because usually I bring up track maps so we people know exactly what kind of turns we're talking about. Yeah, here. Yeah. What is so I, I found if I, I enter it in fourth. Yep. And if I barely move the wheel and aim for here. Yep. It keeps more speed, but uh, if I miss that mark and it's a really tiny mark to miss, then it feels like the car slows down a bit through that turn. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That is what I mean. If you know the initial turn in is very strong, and then suddenly. The steering becomes sluggish and uh, and dumb, and this is where you are in that moment of slide. I want to say like it is a a tiny slide, but it really slows you down too much, as you're not really in control of it.
You notice you were a little too far away again after turn three? Yeah. That turn nine looked really brilliant. So I'm already taking some notes for the consultancy report. Yeah, if you widen your entry a little more, um, this is spot on. And by the way, what an absolute flyer in sector two. Holy shit. 42.4 in sector 1, that is an improvement by a tenth. 52.3 in the middle sector, 2.5 tenth. Now, don't do an average in sector 3. Oh, and he does it. He does it even worse. He's throwing basically away the entire lap. Bollocks. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Just to put it into place, he did a 34.295 as purple ah. in the final sector. To now put in a 34.635, he lost two tenths to compared to his PB, which was 34.441, and now he did 34.635. So still puts it PB. You're talking, Mitchy. I can't hear you. I, I was heard talking flyer. <laughs> yeah, well. To be totally honest, you've thrown away a 59-2. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I do. <laughs> I need to, Yeah, I'm your coach, I need to kick your butt. I shift down the first too soon there. Yes, a tiny little bit. Too good of a lap this time. Also thrown it away. Oh no, wait, this is out lap still. Damn it. Mm hmm
Yeah, you're starting to overdrive right now. Yeah. Wow, 59.4 despite overdriving. Yeah, tires are done. Yeah, agreed. So much agreed, but still, um, middle sector pretty brilliant. Um, first sector has been your personal best indeed. Um, you lost a lot in, in turn six when I was saying, okay, you're overdriving now. Rest of the of the um, sectors were really really good. So just keep on working that um, you see you, you're improving consecutively so after putting 59802 59809 59804 then not some sort of snap then you did 59621 59500 59400 so you're constantly still learning you're constantly still improving and this is you know the phase between learning i've just set your foundation and you already did an hour of work beyond that it's not me coaching you too much right now i'm just doing the fine-tuning adjusting of what you do but you actually have um took what i set into consideration you've already adapted to your driving and now you're just finalizing you some sort of getting into flesh and blood and i'm just assisting making you aware of things that might be already obvious to you but i just make sure that you've been made aware anyway, regardless of whether it was obvious or not. Um, so if you now keep working on the thing with the brake, um, and I'm pretty sure you got to start doing this once you hit the barrier on doing it right now, at some point you're going to continuously slip in 58.9, 58.9, 59.8. And this is then when you start experimenting, and you're like, okay, if I we'll use, go a little quicker into 7. But then use the brake to make the car rotate mid-turn and get a blast of an exit. Do I then get a 58.7? That is the things that that has been natural. As you, I've just made you aware, so I'll lay down a foundation, a basement, and you now just walk through it and do your own way about it. So 10 minutes to go. Keep doing. Keep going. Um, maybe we can even further improve you. What well, do you think? Um, I mean, we didn't touch anything like Packers or Ride Height. Or any of that stuff do do you think that would make a difference or um, like if we lowered the car would it help with the the center force or would it just spin it around or to be honest it it could do something good with it it could also do something bad with it um i can only tell you i'll lower the rear end of the mclaren from five at uh, front five to five point five rear seven point zero to the towards rear to six five and right now the Porsche is 5.6 front and 6.3 in the rear, which is pretty okay. Also, minimal pack has just um, helped to avoid the complete bottoming out. So I think on the right height, we're pretty much at an, um, I want to say, spot with, with forces to stay there. Um, like, well, there is a good word in German that hit, hits the nail on the head. Um... Let me see if I can get this translated, but I would just keep it where it is right now and uh, okay. just keep going. Okay. So let's see if I can find... So then let's see what I can do in the last eight minutes. Exactly.
I'm just happy for once in my life I was faster than Michihoya. <laughs> well, you are indeed. <laughs> Until you get in the car again. <laughs> well, I, did, I got in the car twice after that, but I couldn't get it done, so hmm, you could. I mean, okay, you had more attempts, but still. So the, the word I was looking for is with the with the current right tide and packers where we are right now, we found ourselves in a place or location of perseverance. perseverance. Um, if that makes any sense. Does that word even exist, perseverance? Well, perseverance has paid off because I'm faster than I've ever been. Okay. That's a good bombshell to end this one. Well, we're not ending yet. We're still seven minutes to go. That means three, four yeah, more I, attempts. If I, if I take that too much to the inside, then I get a lot of oversteer on the out. Yep, true. Was that late? Uh, that was the one time I wasn't... Uh, hold on. Late in what regard? On the gas. A, a tiny little bit maybe, but you really compromised yourself too much for 12 already. So you couldn't really go much more early. But yeah, it was a little, little late. Now stay close to second, come on, stay close. Yeah, sort of. You turn three indeed. Now hit that four. Oh, good. That is brilliant. That is a good line. That is basically a very good line. That was a great line through four. Maybe a Not little too slow. 32391. That is... That is... Is that purple? No, it's not. But it is personal best in sector one. And he should know it by himself that he just did personal best sector one. So the no, last slow through there. Never mind, keep going. Personal best sector one. And dead. I'm gonna speak on Hanger straight to him about this turn four. Uh first analyzing twelve and thirteen though. That was really quick, really good one. 52.5 is still good. Uh, guy's not gonna lie. He is... He is going to beat himself again. 60,000 in Sector 1 and even 19,000 in Sector 2. If he just... Yeah, gets his third sector correct. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can see a point three here. 59.3. Wow. <laughs> How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> he keeps hitting the, the, the flat zeros. A 59.300. If I would have had anything to mourn about the first sector of last lap, then you were a little hesitant out of turn 4, but this looked good again, keep going. He's just 70 tenth, uh, 70 thousandths of his PB, he said he lost time through 7, let's see if he can pick it up this time. 
Looks early in the throttle. Very aggressive though. Let's see. He really had a really good 10, 11, 12. Very far on the inside. Never mind though. Keeps it. Yeah. Oh damn it. Yeah, overpendling the weight there. Yeah, you you saw me uh, giving it a shake to sling it, didn't you? Mhm. Mm exactly. Yeah, that threw me off. All right, you got one final attempt if you wish to. <laughs> but how do you do that? In all honesty, like beforehand, 802, 809, 804, 809 again, and then. Five zero zero four zero zero three zero zero. I I I don't know. I guess good coach and consistent. Um. Okay. Wait. Basically, um, there is no point in getting out again because the uh, the session will cut off before you can. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. That. I'm I'm tired anyway. Yeah, I was thinking exactly that like thirty minutes ago that you're starting to get a little yeah, tired. Yeah. Cool, but... man. Um. That was very educational. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I have to say, you also did a pretty awesome job. Um, like, it doesn't happen very often that um, people, like, really improve in the actual sessions in the very beginning. So, um, as we speak, I'm pretty, pretty damn happy with what you did today and I'm um, very convinced that this will bring you on in the future and you you know basically you take around the circuit any other car and you now know the lines you now know a little more of how to do and um, also in the consultancy report you will get up a little more educational in terms of dumper settings and all that kind of stuff so you will also learn a little bit okay how can I fine-tune how can I find balance the car um, so that will definitely help you in the future, I hope. And beyond that, if you keep working, I see no evidence why you should not get into 58 soon. Um, I would need to calculate out the personal best that you can get out of this. Let me see. So if, you, if we just combine pers perfect sectors right now. 52, uh, 371, and 34, 2... Five. Yeah, your personal best virtually is a 159.058. So I would not see a reason why you not should get into 58s at some point. Um, just need to keep one working. Your last two laps have been really, really good. Um, apart from the fact that you've been the last one, but you were on the verge of, uh, of getting a personal best sector in sector two again. So that was good stuff. That was a really good job there. Cool, man. Well, hey, um, Mitchie, thank you very much. Um, I'll keep on practicing, keep on watching your videos, and uh, yeah, I'll be in touch. Thank you very much indeed, man. Um, also, do you have any feedback on what to maybe improve, or what uh, what would you say has helped you the most? Um, well, I mean, your feedback helped the most. I mean, I mean, what can I say? You you were, you you were pretty clear to me where I was making mistakes which I think lent itself to me improving so quickly, lap, 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 lap after lap, because I wasn't guessing what you meant. Um, no, I mean, it was, I mean, look at the results. I, I think they speak for themselves. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm very, um, very happy with what you did. I mean, basically, your net improvement is a full second, even more than that. So coming from a 58, um, no, no, a 2.0, four you said 2004 um yeah. we i might admit though um that we had a little how shall i say um a little improvement in no traction control i think it really adds some weight penalty or it, at least it doesn't slow you down um in that regard as much so as it does not reduce the power I'm pretty sure half a second is down to the traction control, but the other half a second, or even the 610, are down to little setup improvement and basically 
uh, improvement of driving. I think basically just the driving itself, um, working with everything, getting still known um, to everything that's going on in the car. Um, pretty sure four to five tenths on the driving itself. Um, yeah, so you really did an awesome job there, and I'm I'm very glad and happy that you enjoyed it and that you could also improve from it. Yeah, me too, Mickey and Mitchie, and I'll be I'll be in touch, man. I'm I'd like to do another session in the future as well. Oh, that is that is awesome. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. So quickly going to end this video for you, and uh, then I can have a little brief talk with you again. So guys, that's going to be it for today. That's going to be it also for John Sayala. Um, he has done an awesome job. Uh, he has done such big improvements. I'm really glad. I'm really happy that he could make them. I'm really happy I could help him there. And if you guys are interested, check out the descriptions of the video below as to get in touch with me if you want to get faster, if you want to get coaching for what I think is a reasonable um, pricing here you also find those um, information down in the description guys thank you so much for watching this this is the simpid i'm Ichi hoyer and i'll see you guys out on the track had to do that little joke sorry